One of the centre's initiatives is to focus on this issue of social licence, social support, public confidence, social acceptability in energy sector development. Canada has got enormous natural resources and a wide range of elements of the energy sector. To a large extent, uh, Canada's economic prosperity depends on developing these resources, bringing them to market in a manner that's environmentally responsible and also socially responsible as well. But we've seen a number of instances where local communities, uh, other stakeholders will resist this development. One of the projects for the centre going forward, and we've been working on this for a couple of years, is really to understand what are the drivers of this resistance. If we've got a better understanding of the drivers and the causes, it's going to lead to some policy insights for companies, for uh, governments, uh, for stakeholders, and how to better manage this development process. Energy policy intersects with a number of other areas that are really critical to overall public policy development. Energy policy intersects with issues of economic development, social relations, economic security, federal provincial relations, Aboriginal affairs and so forth. So it's a tough area to really find those sets of policies that are going to reach a, a reasonable balance with these other areas. So this is a complex area. Academics love complex problems. Academics love to think about the difficult uh, challenges. So here at Ivy, we have a core uh, group of faculty experts who have really focused on energy issues and who are world leaders in energy policy analysis. So we're able to bring some of this academic uh, expertise to bear in applied analysis of important policy challenges that are facing the country at this point in time. One of the really unique aspects of the Energy Centre is that we've sought to build up partnerships with major energy sector stakeholders. And this really acts as a way for the faculty and the staff in the energy sector to connect with companies, with governments, with stakeholders who are really involved. It'd be very easy for faculty to stay in their ivory tower and to think about policy, but we believe we're going to have a greater impact if we identify those policies and those issues that are really salient, if we really sort of get into the, the details of what's happening on the ground. So one way to do this is to actively engage uh, with people who are working in the sector. So an important part of the centre's work is to act as this neutral forum for bringing together stakeholders with different perspectives on energy policy development to discuss specific issues that are important, that might be challenging. And as a neutral player in this debate, we can really encourage actors to come together who may not otherwise converse in a neutral, balanced manner. So our approach in organizing conferences, panel events, other outreach uh, events is to make sure we've got a representation of different perspective, different stakeholders on each policy issue. For a number of years, we've addressed the issue of Aboriginal engagement and Aboriginal affairs in energy sector development. We've been very fortunate to bring together leaders within government departments, Aboriginal leaders from out west, academics, environmental groups, thoughtful leaders who can really engage in discourse on how to resolve some of these uh, complex challenges that aren't always straightforward. And we found this has been a very fruitful way to move forward on uh, policy development. I see two major issues that are facing development of the Canadian energy sector at this point. One of the major challenges for the energy sector in Canada at the moment is this issue of market access. We know that our gas markets, our gas export markets to the US has, have largely uh, disappeared with the development of shale gas. The US is also becoming increasingly self-reliant on its own indigenous uh, oil reserves as well. So there's a risk that uh, Canada's traditional uh, major market, the US, is going to diminish within the future. A second uh, area which I think is particularly important for Canada to address going forward is the issue of Aboriginal relations and engagement with energy sector development. My hope is this is going to lead to a greater impetus for government, industry and Aboriginal groups to really work together in partnerships to develop these resources in a mutually beneficial manner. One of the areas that we focused on is really trying to understand what's the economic contribution of the energy sector and its different elements to Canadian GDP, to the health of the Canadian economy. This is really critical information for policymakers as they design policies around the sector to really understand what's the significance 
of the energy sector to our Canadian standard of living and our uh, Canadian economy. So one of the projects we're looking at at the moment is trying to understand what's the impact of this volatility on the performance of the provincial economies. How much is a falling oil price going to impact not just the Albertan economy, but also the rest of Canada, given that we are tied to the strength uh, of the Albertan economy through indirect mechanisms. So how much is the Ontario economy impacted? How much is the BC economy impacted by falling oil prices? This is one of the questions that we want to address in some of our future research.